a day in Wingardium. Hello, this is Albie and Thanatos. Hello, everybody. We are back again for, I believe, the third round Radiant of Band. the Sunday Evening Cup series for this week. Uh, this one between Ham Ham Clubhouse and Wingardium Leviosa coming off the back of a pretty sick win in that last game of theirs. Dyer's Band. Yeah. Dreams on the Storm Spirit just... Mm, fantastic play and really good communication with their team. But yep. they are coming up against Ham Ham Clubhouse. They are former champions. They've got a little roster shuffle. Radiant I don't think band. this is the same team, but one, two weeks ago. But uh, Dark Falco, Dusa, Pandego, I believe, are all returning contenders and certainly high-quality players. Oh, for sure, yeah. Ham Ham Clubhouse going deep into the tournament every week. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, it, this is going to be a tough one for Wingardium Leviosa for sure. Yeah, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, there is a D in Wingardium, isn't there? I mean, what, is, Wing what is with some of these teams and misspelling their names? Vanguard? What is May that? Maybe this, is, maybe this means something that we're not aware of. I somehow doubt it, though. I think that's just a misspell. blatant misspelling. Yeah, that's disappointing. Uh, Wingarium. Wingarium Leviosa, mate. Wingari. Gary. Gaza. <laughs> Gaza Levy. <laughs> Gaza Levy. Something yeah, like he that actually invented Levi jeans. Don't know if he knew that. <laughs> For sure. Uh, Visage and Clockwork have been picked up. Two of the most popular heroes in this tournament, at least. And just very throughout 6.79. Viper as Dyer's well. Pit. Or Wingardium Leviosa. Or yep. Wingarium, sorry. Yep. Uh, Wingarium. Uh, also banning out the Marana after MLG Columbus. Everyone is just... It's... It's Marana all day, mm. every day. I, I for one, am a little sick of it. I, yeah. I, I don't want to see any more Marana, but everyone thinks they're Bone 7 and he plays it, and everyone thinks they're Eternal MB. And no, it's just it's a decent hero. It's just all... It's decent, it, but yeah, it got to calm down. I mean, it's This a, is a trend, and you just need to recognize that and move on with your lives. I mean, the arrows are luck-based. Sure, they can be great, but you need to be lucky to get a big arrow hit, and... I, I, I just don't rate it as a really strong carry. I think there are better carries. Anyway, Venomats are being picked up, and there is a strong hero. Oh, yeah. Well, both teams are bringing them out. Yeah. Possibly your two least favorite heroes, Viper and Venomats, you just can't handle the poison effects. Fuck poison. I don't know if, like, Fuck poison, uh, man. Did the color green do something bad to you as a child? Because you don't seem to mind, like, a Lich Frost Blast, which does the same thing, and Drow Arrows, but whatever. Venomancer yeah. and Viper, both strong heroes. Great uh, debuffs with their Radiant's slows. Pit. Decent one-on-one -on -one heroes. Decent in the team fights. They're both Dyer's really pit. good. Lots of stuff, even though they are pretty distinct heroes, quite different from one another. As Shadow Demon is picked up for Wingarium. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Still looking to see any real core heroes from these teams, but there's Death Prophet. Radiance pit. Really strong pushing here, so maybe we will see a bit of a push strike coming out from Hanham -Han with those Venomance awards getting leveled up early. I wouldn't be surprised to see. And Alina for Wingarium Levia. So what do you think about that pick? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a pocket strap. They, they picked it very quickly. They knew that with the Shadow Demon, they can have a really nice roaming duo. Don't expect this Lena to be core cool whatsoever. That is a Shadow Demon and Lena laning together, holding hands all game. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's the strap they would have wanted. Dance you see Ham Ham picking up a death prop. That, to me, means group up as five and push hard early. That Shadow is. Demon and Lena means try and pick off heroes who are all around the map. And if Ham Ham can track the map, I think it means Shadow Damn. Demon and Lena are... A little less effective, but disruption in the light strike array is going to hurt every single time. And I think now they'll just be looking for one more core hero, something decently survivable. I think they'll want to give Viper perhaps the safe lane, perhaps the mid. And, uh, these two supports will be roaming a lot, so yeah. don't be picking an anti mage. Don't be picking Alchemist. a spectator. Alchemist. Oh, you and your Alchemist. <laughs> Alchemist, I mean, the unstable concoction also works with the disruption and line stake array combo. You can be it charging does. it up while all that shit is going on, and he has that survivable tankiness that uh, you were talking about, which would go well with those two supports. Um, yeah, he's, he's yeah, strong in the mid game cool. when Ham Ham will be looking to push. I think it'd be it's a good anti push with acid nice. spray. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I thought that this was just your alchemist lust. Uh, <laughs> blinded, but blind, blind alchemist lust. <laughs> but no, I'm no. I am I am convinced acid spray is good anti push. It's not great against Death Prophet, but it's good. 
Uh, you get some physical damage. You get to survive decently well against Venomancer because you've got all that HP regen Sick coming region. up. I'm on board. And now Hamham possibly looking for another pusher to give them a little bit stronger early mid game. I I uh, think they could even pick up a less rack, pick up a farming less rack. Yeah. You give Death Pop a solo safe. Aggro try Venomancer and Grave oh. and Visage give you some pretty good ability to hit that your split earth. Man. And if someone gets hit by a wombo combo with Visage, Venom and Lash Rack, they are falling over dead. Death Prophet yeah. will get big levels into exorcism. That's where my head's at, but certainly there are plenty of ways to play this. This isn't a set in stone pocket strategy. Was, uh, seconds to who go. do you think will be going with mid for Ham Ham? The Storm Spirit or the Death Prophet? I guess it'd have to be the Storm Spirit out of those two, surely. Yeah, I, I tend to think it'll be the Storm Spirit. It doesn't do fantastically well against the Viper, but Ooh. certainly possible. Oh, yes, sir. All mm, right. So now, in Boca mid, perhaps. No, Viper mid, surely. Maybe but, not. Well, I, I think I think it's going to be a safe lane viper. They need to find a way to uh, get really survivable yep. heroes, really yeah. self sufficient heroes, so that Shadow Demon and Lena can go around doing their work. And Just viper wrecks the storm spirit. So that'd be cool. viper wrecks a lot of heroes. Oh yeah, cool. undoubtedly. Yeah, and perhaps even Five does Ham Ham have room for a Nyx Assassin? Does nicely against Viper, does really well against Invoker. Try and break the chain of initiation from Lena's AoE, from Clockwork AoE, from Shadow Demon AoE. I think it's I think it, there's possibilities there, but mm. certainly not mandated or anything. I mean, it's just it's just one of those things that uh, I think could be useful if they decide not to go Leshrac. But they could even potentially pick up an anti mage. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see a hard carry to go with their try lane. Bounty hunter. Bounty hunter. Oh, bounty hunter. Hmm. Oh, uh, there are certainly some squishy targets in Shadow Demon and Lena. So Bounty Hunter could be having some fun there. Could well be. So I suppose it'll be the safe try lane being run by Death Prophet, is that what we're going to I see? I guess so. It seems unusual, but I don't know how else they would lane this. Yeah, and interesting. Or Wingardium, or Wingarium, uh, I don't know, maybe it could be either Viper or Invoker Mid, probably Invoker Mid, as you said. He wants those yeah. levels pretty bad. Has now been picked up by Dreams, by the way, who was, who was their mid player last game. Guess what I have. Please uh, guess, guess what it is. You've That's got the right. invisible mouse it's problem. It's the You're invisible have to motherfucking mouse glitch. So you can in oh, right. introduce those teams as I uh, restart the game. Okay, well, I will try and do this in a very non confusing, slow, and clear way because you don't, fair viewers at home, have the ability to see the screen at the moment, I imagine. Mm -hmm. So we have Sal Fowl and Frolgos. They'll be holding hands all day. Those are the Shadow Demon and the Lena. Currently moving towards the offlane would be Clockwork being handled by Static. They ran an aggressive tri lane, all three of them together last game. Dreams is mid. He's running an Exhort Invoker uh, into the mid lane. And Viper being handled by Shadow Ranger. So the laning players, the same as last game, even if none of the heroes are. Uh, the team have Ham Clubhouse. It is Yugi taking the Bounty Hunter to the offlane. We have Dusa, Pandago, and Annihilate running the defensive tri lane. And that means that Dark Falco is taking the Death Prophet solo to mid. Uh, that is the Storm Spirit by I Annihilate. Pandago handling the Visage and Dusa on the Venomancer. And it really does look like a defensive tri lane as and here we go. Fro Ogos and Sal Fowl on the Shadow Demon Lena combination are now roaming together, perhaps trying to find the Bounty Hunter. And Yugi does indeed pop the Shadow Walk. Illusion Rooms, Morning Top, being guarded by Pandego. Are you back by any chance? I am back. Probably? We are back. Oh, glory be. We are back, all is good. Oh, so happy to hear. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like a nice block being uh, put down by Dark Falco. He's going to be able to control the lane decently well, and it's going to be, I think, quite an easy, even contest of skill to see uh, if Invoker can defeat Dark Falco being played by the... Uh, uh, Dark Arco playing the Death Prophet. Yeah. 
Should be a good matchup mid. Brogu guys, well, cop in the game. Cop in, well, disrupted by his own team, but now completely oh, no. stuck in those cogs. Static, you done it now. Brogogos somehow, nope, That's not gonna escape. Blood. And he will go down as first blood. Now, Grave Chill coming down on Southow. And he will cover a bit of damage, but be out just fine. Those unfortunate cogs. Oh dear. As desperately disappointing from Static. You would be, yeah. you would be salty as all get out if you uh, had that happen to you. Brogogos hit a really nice three-man light strike array and just couldn't get out of those level 1 cogs. Yeah, not the best. An interesting sentry ward being placed by the Dire here. Don't know that it can really D ward much. I do just miss this ward with their observer. So we only need another observer ward there for that to be particularly useful. Yeah, uh, looks like Ham Ham using the side pull trying to get himself a couple extra level and experience, but that'll be split, of course, with the changes. And now there could be another. Uh, engagement south are getting decently deep and started going to be able to pick up this big creep if he times it correctly. But I don't know that he did, I think he missed that. Oops. And now with Venom Scale being hit on the static, Grave Tool going down as well. The offense to this one being used, big invoke and Sunstrike are going to be able to take out Zeus. The static will be the first to fall. And now I Annihilate chasing down the heroes, south are being chased down by the Visage, certainly going to fall, Aim and up. now Frogos trying to stop it from being a lane wipe, won't be able to escape here, stopping up, it's a light striker race, right. what a turn I annihilate too deep, Frogos, what a player, what a play. Yeah, yeah, what a salve, just saves himself and manages to land a good light striker array and Dragon Slave sorts him out. That, you can't, you can't overestimate the importance of being well, able to meanwhile we've got him Yugi. Taken out of the solo Ooh. kill by that Viper, just underestimating that ridiculous flow and damage. And meanwhile, the top light strike away, Dragon Slave, taking out the Storm Spirit once again. Stuck in those cogs, and that's a good combo as well that I don't think we talked about during the drafting stage, but yeah. Right, light strike away in the cog is obviously going to hit every single time, and while you have a clockwork with his battery salt hammering away at you as well, not great fun. Dusa is smoked up and looking at mid, but. Invoker at the moment is way back behind this pushed up creep wave. We'll push back now, so perhaps a chance for Dusa to get on in there. Yeah, might even be. Doesn't look like it now. He could have been looking towards a courier pick off, but they did upgrade it as soon as it hit the three minute mark, so very cognizant of that possibility. And, and now Yuki chasing down Shadow Ranger pops off the south. Looks like he'll be fine. And Yuki out of regen. Yeah. Already taking the solar death, but up top some pings come down. Let's have a look. Dusa, copping the combo, and he's taken out in quick order. Static Extreme Weaver should be taken out by Iron Annihilate, and he is. Falfrau, perhaps Candago gonna get the solo kill here, and he does. Iron Annihilate coming back in, although he's very low. Not enough mana for any kind of spell on Frogoth, however. Does turn around, and Pandago will retreat, perhaps not realizing that there was no mana there. I suppose the creeps are coming in as well. Oh, yeah. We probably have oh, beautifully done. What, what was that? Static popping off that south instantly on I Annihilate, and he's now out of regen. That's that's a small play with massive effect, and mm. now the Dusa, he's coming down bottom. Shadow Ranger in some decent trouble, pops out a Viper Strike. He wants to get a counter kill, and he might be able to immediately take down the Venomats to Swish, and that is really good awareness from Viper. Knew he was done for, and managing to pick up that kill with that freshly minted Viper Strike. Yeah. Pretty good play from him, and he is leading the last hits chart and does have two kills now and solo kills as well. So he's probably going extremely well on levels. He's level six up with, up there with the Invoker. Yeah, one thing we haven't mentioned, by the way, pure damage from a maxed out exhort on Invoker is just overwhelming. Yep. Ham Ham is in trouble all the time. Now they prop up the smoke, hit the venomous scale, catches out to his static, pops the cog. Now he needs to get the hell out of dodge. It's with a sole assumption that won't be enough. Salves up and with the changes to wave the uh, Venomance's poison affects him, will be able to escape. Just barely. Um, yeah, Invoker's Sunstrike is adding an extra 225 pure damage. Every time you hit the cog and the disruption, there's just no reason to miss. And Dreams has been on point, good communication, letting him know that uh, he might be needed. As Yugi now in mid. Middle lane. Dreams getting low. Pops that Shinada and is now tracked up. Shuriken. In comes the Sunstrike, oh. does take out the Bounty Hunter! Boom! 
But Dark Falco with that last Crypt Swarm, with the last of a mana, will be able to take him out. But well, such an insolent turnaround with that Sunstrike as well. That pretty good, a pretty good play. Garyum are playing really well so far. I think. And the oh, static getting rather deep on Pandago here does pop off the battery assault disruption. Meanwhile, going down on Deucer and he'll be taken out. So will the Clockwork. He was a bit deep, but forcing Iron Idolate and Pandago to choose between them. Southpaw though, just a little slow in getting out of there. Familiar stun coming down on him. Grave chill and a couple more auto attacks. Well, they take out Swarm Spirit. And Dago turning around again, Soul Assumption on the Lena will be enough for her, but Dreams on the Invoker. Ice Wall perhaps not as effective as it could have been, but Pandega will nonetheless be taken up with that last auto attack, but Dark Falco is in with Yugi and Dreams will now fall again to that duo. Well, uh, I suppose that is overall a win for Ham Ham. But yeah, I think I think it certainly is. And the problem is Bizarre's level. He's level 8 already. He's maxed out Soul Assumption with Familiars against the likes of some really, really low level heroes. You look at level 5 Lena, level 4 Shadow Demon, level 4 Clockwork. There's no one even close to being able to handle this Bizarre at this level. He's in a tri lane, level 8 at 7 minutes in. He's been the last man standing a lot of the time. Only took his first death just then, is 4 1 and 4. And even though he only has 6 creep kills, his impact has been tremendous. And, and now, they're going to struggle to deal with him. Yugi and Dusa coming up around. Southrow covering a lot of damage from these familiars, and the stun Zuga down missing Southrow. But I Annihilate straight in there with the ball lightning and straight back out again. And Stream TP is in good play from him on the Storm Spirit. And they managed to pick off that Shadow Shaman. Some good harass damage yeah, being done by this Bizarre. You will lose the familiar there, however. That's 100 gold to Dreams, I believe. I Annihilate going on Dreams, and now with the Grave Chill going down on Static. I Annihilate kind of in two minds of, on who to go on here. And so with something doing big damage, but GGWRD, he will get out of there just fine. Meanwhile, Dark Falco is pushing, pressuring this mid tower, and it look like, looks like it's about to fall. The TP and Fortify combo may be enough to save it, but well denied by Lena. Good save, but may pay for it with her life. Not out of trouble just yet. Southrow's entry will save her. She does have so low. She does have that uh, Laguna Blade up now. Yugi making a go on Shadow Ranger down bottom. Hits him with a track now with counter attack. And, well, that's not even close. No. No, not really. No. Bounty Hunter picking up a Soul Ring with his Orb of Venom. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I saw I that earlier. That I... Sorry, what were you saying? Oh, it's just always annoying and Bounty Hunter struggling with those monitors. And there you go, coming I around Dreams. Dreams is taking out Crypt Swarm and the familiar stuns. I think Ham Ham is starting to pull away now. Bizarre mm -hmm. is getting a bit too big. Death Prophet is starting to have an impact, starting to take out towers, getting good farm, hasn't died yet. You can see the grass but was so even for so long, starting to take a pretty steep dive in favor of the Ham Ham Clubhouse. Yeah, the Ham Ham's just roaming around really well, getting a lot of pickoffs here. Their warding is quite nice with this one here and up here, scouting out these two lanes. And meanwhile, Yugi doing a good job of roaming around and shutting down that Viper who had the solo farm. He is going for his agony. Like, oh, yep. oof, boom! Venomancer was roasted thoroughly. Southrow, yeah, absolutely. The Southrow just getting so harassed by these familiars of the Visage. It's just being really hard for him. He's entering every fight with like water health. Shadow and now Static getting deep again. Does manage to get off two, a couple of good familiar stuns. I have no idea where that okay, Storm Spirit has full lightning back to town. And there are four of them there now. This is going to be tough. Shadow Ranger very low with that familiar. And he will be taking... Oh, he's in the disruption, in fact. Does have track on him. He should go down. The ball lightning in. Annihilate oh, he's not doesn't dead. do enough to take him out. And it looks like Shadow Ranger is actually going to escape. Static, likewise. A little Ward doing a bit to him. Zafrao not in the best position. Looks like Dreams is going to fall, and he does. Oh, Frogogoth and Zafrao. 
Managed, in fact, to turn on that bounty hunter and the massage as well. Frogagos on the Lena. Two solo kills. What, what is, am I what seeing? Is this Lena? This Lena on no health. Managing to turn and pick up two crucial kills. That is incredible play from Frogagos. I was really concerned. Lena is so level dependent. Shadow Demon needs the levels. We're being crushed by this Visage, but Lena has moved from level 5 to level 10 before Visage can get from 8 to halfway through 9. What that a is player. ridiculous. Yeah, that I turn. I was sure Lena was going down there. She's so squishy in the first place. She had about 100 health left, maybe. And well. She's she's doing work, and if Dreams was the MVP of the first game, is now a little bit struggling. He got a triple kill with those Forge Spirits somehow, picking up at least two last hits after his death. And Looking towards a Yule Scepter, 6-4-4, four, and four, not terrible, and having just a little less impact and allowing Frogagos to do the work. Oh dear, Viper is in some trouble here. Shadow Ranger has got to get out. The familiars are coming around and there's not going to be any escape in these trees, you wouldn't think, with their stuns. Oh no. Oh, he popped off the dust and it didn't play. He's going on Yugi now, but he realizes what's happening and tries to run. Does have the track down on him and, well, that's going to be the end of him. A good coordinated no gank there. Uh, he was a little deep and they managed to pick him off. Meanwhile, they're pressuring this top yeah. tower, and, well, I suppose the Wingardium and Levius are going to be able to do some damage here, Dyer's but the whole gank party from the bottom is going to co be coming right back and defending this. Towers hits. Perhaps Wingardium will be able to Radiant's take a fight here. The if they turned, if they realized now and turned on it. Oh, Venomous Gale just Gale. Off, off. Put a call down static. And they'll get the tower and be back. Meanwhile, the tower goes down top as well, and Death Prophet still pushing. Dark Falcon, that is. Yeah. Pandago playing fast and loose with these familiars. He must have lost at least three, four. I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it was six familiars this game. He just keeps on losing them, giving away 100 gold and a stomp, a big part of Visage's damage. Unfortunate when uh, Viper got caught out in this area down here, he popped off the smoke of the seat, tried to run away, but sure. the bounty hunter was standing on top of him when he popped <laughs> Oh up. yes. As soon as he realized what had happened, he popped off the dust of appearance, and by then he was well boned. He was done for. Certainly. And indeed he did die, giving up a three-man track kill, which is certainly not what you want. It was only level one track at the time, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Visage has been feeding the familiars a bit, but they have also been doing huge damage and some pretty good stuns as well. So not all bad, and yep. even given that, Ham Ham does have a, well, a decent, pretty solid gold lead. Uh, with with track, of course, you'll be making a whole lot of cash, and with the, the pushing power of the Death Prophet. It's... Yeah. I, uh, I, I don't know if you've realized this, if you want to check Bounty Hunter's inventory, what does Staff of Wizardry and Null Talisman turn to? Mm, dear. Bazinga Bazinga, I think we're seeing a Dagon Bounty Hunter. Not the Dagon Bounty Hunter. I, well, it looks like it's going to happen. So. Yeah. I mean, they do have the squishy supports. I mean, in, in Lena especially, you really want to destroy her before she can land down all of those uh, ridiculous nukes. And in the, in that fight where she did get that solo double kill, we saw how, how well, a Dagon there would have saved a lot of trouble so I mean if you can put, pick them off early it is pretty big so uh, if you're ever gonna get Dagon on a bounty hunter a game like this is probably where to do it yeah that shadow demon doesn't have the boots 0 5 and 11 11 uh, Sal yeah 11 assists 5 <laughs> deaths 0 kills working towards that Malk award and I, I don't no, if you'll be able to burst down anyone, but the uh, Shadow Dean wants you to pick that up. I mean, Viper, tanky, Clockwork, tanky, Invoker can be made to be tanky, Lena, two levels and picking up a mech for tankiness, and is Shadow Demon enough reason to get a Dagon? I, I still think it's Lena as well. Lena is it's not going to be tanky even with that mech, and now Annihilate turning back around is going to Haps pick up Southbow, he does full lightning in. Now going on the Lena, in fact. Links her up. 
and she's copping the damage, is oh taking God. out Crypt Swarm in as well, but she was already dead. In fact, the Vizage yeah, getting that that kill. Vizage just getting killed left, right, and center. Does he have eight kills on that Vizage? That is plenty. That is plenty of kills. That is that is quite enough. Harry Visage coming right up. He does have that point boost. He's going for a really early Agonims after his Medallion of Courage. I mean, it's like a standard Visage build, just expedited by 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, static. Oh, dear. There's the Electric Vortex. There's the Venomous Scale. And... Oh. Uh, Goodbye. That was unfortunate. Walks off the Blind Cliff and is immediately destroyed. Shadow Ranger decides he wants some of that. You all stepped it up, unfortunate misses on those Zaj stuns, but it's yeah. still gonna go down again with track. Mm. <laughs> now they're fighting from low ground. South, I want the piece, I fear he might get it. God. But the leader is too with low and blade. exploding with that. <laughs> oh my god. Zaj hunting for another kill, going in behind enemy lines. She don't care. Clockwork what a hook shot right that it gets into the fight, Annihilate trying to run away, Belina sends out the Dragon Slave, won't be able to finish the kill there, Pandago now doing even more work, pits up a double kill, the Solar Suns is a too much triple kill going the way of Pandago, this is too much damage and Dark Falco using both spirits to take out this tower. Yep, that should be the mid tier too, you would have to think. Okay, I guess they are... Alright, low. Radiant's Maybe they'll actually get out, shape. but Dark Falco does want it. Goodness, Lazarus is 500 away from picking up his Agonims. Ridiculous. It's going to be something like a 16 minute Agonim on Lazarus with boots and the medallion. Yep. And now, Bounty Hunters finished the Dagon. I don't know if I believe my eyes, but that's what it is. And glory be, Shadow Demon picks up brown boots. Hey. Why'd you go all forms? Is, a, is that a thing? Is that... No, not so much of a okay. thing. It, it can be a thing. I was thing. just a bit excited about the Shadow... Uh, the, well, I was excited for the Shadow Demon getting those boots. Now Static Force Force Battery Assault and getting right back. Not an offensive Battery Assault, that's for sure. Yugi tracking up everybody. Yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit worried for yeah. Wingarium. Yeah, not looking good. This mid tower. Dragos, they're going on him. Here it comes. Where? We're putting it down. Dagon, Bazinga, Bazinga. Whoop, well, missed half of that, but yes, Dagon indeed. Doctor appearance is popped off. Those ghosts. Oh dear. Oh, it's a destruction. The bounty hunter does fall static, stuck in those cogs, but oh, as for the rest of them. Oh, South Power is not saved. It's forced to disrupt himself, and that's only going to make things oh, worse. No, My no, god. Oh, no. oh, Poison Nova, just for good measure. Whatever. GG's been called. GG is indeed called, and I think it is, well, required. <laughs> it's... Tower's getting beat down. Radiance mid towers coming yeah, apart. I mean, there might have been a way back with different heroes, but you've Dyer's got your solo tower, mid and Boca being. Drill. Pretty handily out leveled, and Boga so level dependent. Tower, are you doing so good? Hey. Was this a fake GG? The bounty hunter is disconnected. It's... I'm not. Where's the tower explosion? I think everyone needs to call GG in order for the game to end. So that, they... No, I... is that true? Yeah, that's I how it think... works. If everyone calls GG, Jumping the game ends. Or well, you can just like. Yeah, right, there we go. It's over. Huh. Not with a bang, but a whimper, but congratulations to Ham Ham Clubhouse. They played wonderfully well. The try lane of Lena, Shadow Demon, and pick any other hero out of the pool, always going to be decently effective. Managed to hold on, and uh, just Bat Visage, somehow getting so much work done. Ridiculous. More kills and assists than all of Wingarium's kills, but jeez, what what a player. Dark Falco quietly managed to pick up most gold, most experience, and fewest deaths in the game. 
quality player getting it done on the Death Prophet. Yeah, and really pushing hard, which is exactly what they wanted from their Death Prophet, of course. Yeah, just well played by Ham Ham. And Wingarium had a great first game, but Ham Ham was always going to be really tough. Yeah, quality team. Cool. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.